Loreen, I have a question. How in the hell does Bill Belichick know who's getting the head coaching job for the football giants before any damn body else? I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like it's some bullshit, babe. There you have it. Lil Reed has said it. That's some bullshit. How the fuck does he know? I don't know what to say. Fuck it! Sportsadelic, Sportsadelic, what is up? I am Ring, and that's Lil Ring. What is going on in the NFL? Now, the first thing that I want to say is hats off to Brian Flores. God knows he pulled beyond a Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick knew that he probably wouldn't play in the NFL again, but he had stacked his cheddar. And so he can make that decision. And I'm sure, independent of the outcome of this lawsuit, this discrimination lawsuit that Brian Flores has filed against the NFL, I don't think he would have did it if he wasn't going to ultimately be financially okay. But I respect him for being willing enough to stand for something. There's been many black coaches before him that has been enduring the same things, but didn't have that ultimate courage to say, you know what, enough is enough. But think about this. Like, let's just be real here. You are preparing to go to a job interview. Brian Flores was preparing to go to the job interview with the New York Giants. Bill Belichick, sends him these text messages, essentially letting him know that, hey, you're the guy, congratulations. Now, Brian Flores is looking like, you know what, coach, are you sure you got the right bill? Then it's like, oh, oh, okay, I, I F this up. That's what he said in his text, I F this up. Uh, you know, kind of like my bad. This is before his interview with the Giants. So he already knows when he walks into that interview room that the job was already promised to someone else named Brian, right? So he still did what he was supposed to. He went to the interview. He put his best foot forward. But when it's all said and done, if he would fall for that and not be willing to stand, you know, then he's not fit at the end of the day to be leader of men. And that's what he said. You know, so Rooney Rule. There's less coaches now than when the Rooney Rule was instant, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, when the Rooney Rule was, you know, put out there in 2003. There's less coaches that are African-American. We have one, Mike Tomlin. Now, you know, Brian Lethwich, you know, was the front runner for the job in Jacksonville. And he hasn't spoke on this, but not publicly anyway, but the particular GM there, hey, Lethwich was like, can't work with that dude. So he's taking himself out of, you know, that equation. And probably with good reason. Because, again, we're not on the in, in, in side. We don't really know the hell that these black coaches go through. But we do know that they keep moving the goalposts. It used to be that black coaches were not qualified to be head coaches. They needed to hold a offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator position. And then when a lot of... You know, the the black guys started getting those roles. Then 
it switched to the white guys getting the head coaching jobs, and they were like special teams coordinators or, you know, the coordinator of, you know, the pregame meal. And so it's like, okay, I've been doing what you say is required. Now here we go with something else. The Rooney Rule does not state that you're guaranteed to get the job. It's saying that you must interview two two minorities outside of your you know organization. And the most ridiculous things that I've been hearing, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, there are people who don't look like me that are saying that they are tired of the black coaches in the NFL pulling the, the race card. The fact that you have to have a Rooney rule, making it mandatory that you interview at least two minorities outside of your organization, lets you know that it's a problem. And it's race related, minority. So it's not just black guys are wanting to pull the race card. This league is made up of 70%, 70% of minorities. And, and let me take it a step further black minorities. And you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me we can only hold one head coaching position? But here we go again. It's all about the narrative. I sat there and I listened to the commentators for the Chiefs and the um, Cincinnati game, the AFC championship game. And they constantly were talking about, you know, the fact that how the head coach, Andy Reid, Andy Reid's play calling, that was a wonderful design and how he's made it to, you know, four AFC championships in a row. He's won the Super Bowl. Andy Reid is the first coach to go to four AFC and NFC championship games in a row. But as it relates to Kansas City, it's Andy Reid's this and the creativity, you know, that he does with the talented players. Andy Reid had to come out and say, Eric Bieniemy calls 100% of those calls. If he chooses to consult with me, he's the offensive coordinator. If he consults with me about something, fine. If he don't, it's fine. I trust him. But all through the season, Andy Reid, and it's not that they don't know. They know that Eric Bieniemy is the play caller. They know he's the offensive coordinator. But, again, for a narrative, you can't just say Eric Bieniemy is a hell of a play caller because that means he might be deserving of more than just being a guru at the offensive coordinator level. Maybe, just maybe, he can be a head coach. Another black man that hadn't gotten an opportunity and then they said, oh, well, he doesn't interview well. Who gives a damn if he interview well? He evidently knows how to get the most out of the guys that he's going to be coaching. And that's what it should be about. He shouldn't have to just woo, woo, you know, the interview panel. It should be, can he get the job done out there on the field? I want to hear your comments. You know, I want you to subscribe, but more importantly, like this video and comment. I mean, are the black coaches in the NFL just tripping? Or do they really have something to trip about? I mean, it's time out for all of this nonsense. The NFL is trying to hold on to three things. The quarterback position, those head coach position, and certainly owning the NFL teams. And I'm glad that they filed this uh, class action discrimination lawsuit, and I hope that they are successful because that has been the fear for all of these years. What will happen if particularly African-American people come together? Thanks for tuning in. Want to hear your comments? 
Again, please like, subscribe, and share. Be good to yourself and everyone else. Thank you. Get your ass out there on the field. Take this $100,000 and don't you dare try to win. Is that what's going on in the NFL? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it.